One of the world's fastest growing sports is back to crown its best. And for those who love throwing sharp things, boy, is this the place for you. But this year, tighter targets, tougher competition, and tens of thousands of dollars on the line. And for something this big, we had to come to Texas to make sure we could squeeze it all in. So sharpen your blade and strengthen your mind. The World Axe Throwing Championships are next. Welcome to the 2021 Sinorama World Axe Throwing Championships. A sport growing so fast, we had to find the biggest place in the land, Billy Bob's. We're not riding the bull today, though. We're throwing at it. If you don't find it, you're not going to walk out of here as a world champion. Hi, everybody. With Evan Walters, I'm Will Haskett. So glad that you could be along for another exciting year of this championship, an exciting year, Evan, that's culminated in an opportunity not just to celebrate the fact that everybody's been back out competing all season long, but also how good this sport has gotten from a talent standpoint. Honestly, I don't know what they've been doing in the past year, but the competition has never been fiercer. Between all the different disciplines we've had, we've seen some upsets this weekend, we've seen some amazing throwers, and we're just going to be finishing up today. So We've got a lot of hardware to hand out. So let's walk you through the schedule of what we're going to face coming up in this one. Big Axe has become a crowd favorite, a really fun discipline to watch. Duels has gotten down to just five throws per set. It's going to be really interesting to track what's going on in the strategy of that one. And the, for the first time ever, a world knife throwing champion will be crowned before we hand out the biggest trophy of them all, that hatchet championship coming up. So many competitors, so many disciplines. It's been a really big week for more on that. The third member of our broadcast team, Morgan Uber. The growth of axe throwing is evident by the format of this year's world championships. For the championship qualifiers, they were held at multiple locations all around Fort Worth. Those locations had double elimination, best two out of three tournaments to determine our finalists here today that we'll see in the big axe, duels, and knife throwing, and our semifinalists in the hatchet. While it did help speed up the process, having over 300 participants this weekend, they said that they certainly missed the sense of camaraderie and community that they're feeling here today inside Billy Bob's Texas. Will? Yeah, it's a totally different vibe as well under the lights. And coming up next, our semifinals in the hatchet competition. That's the big trophy they're all after, including Mike Philobom trying to win both majors here in 2021. It is going to be a very exciting day and a couple of really fun semifinals coming up next. The 2021 World Axe Throwing Championship is brought to you by Elm City Axe Boards, professional grade axe throwing wood provided by Elm City. Place an order today. The pros don't throw any ordinary axes. They throw axes designed specifically for axe throwing. The World Axe Throwing League has detailed specifications for axes, which include a maximum blade length, a maximum overall weight, and a designated handle length range. Throwing axes are not meant for splitting, so the blades are very thin. This allows throwers to focus on precision, not power. In addition to having a thin blade profile, the axes must also be razor sharp, strong enough to be a utility or camping axe. Most throwers have straight handles on their axes. This means they can easily release the axe, allowing the throw to be replicated and perfected. All waddle axes have a unique design and advantage. Axes with a curved blade, like the Ace of Spades and the Bad Axe, make it easier for throwers to stick the axe to the board with its curved edge while still having four inches of coverage. These axes are perfect for throwers who are starting out or don't have a strong throw and prefer a lighter axe. Axes like the Corporal are heavy hitters. It has a unique fish hook design and added weight on the back of the axe head. That weight provides extra power to ensure the Corporal does not drop when it hits the board. 
The Butcher is Waddle's most popular and unique axe. It has a full four inches of coverage from blade to handle. Its square box-like design also makes the axe easy to land, even on tough boards. After nearly a year and a half of designing and enhancing prototypes, the Butcher just recently became available on the market. As you can see, the axes used by the pros are unique to the sport. For more information, you can visit WorldAxeThrowingLeague.com. And as we're warming up for our first semifinal, Evan, a chance to take a look at the scoring breakdown. It's been uniform throughout the course of 2021. There you see the scoring values for the circles. Six points for the bullseye in the middle, eight points for the kill shots up top. And again, in 2021, the chance to call for a kill shot twice, but any time throughout the course of the match. Yeah, any time they would like to, they can call for those eight-point kill shots, but it's typically done in just reserve for just-in-case scenarios if they need to gain some points or just get a little edge over their opponent. And warming up now for this first semifinal, the reigning U.S. Open champion in the sport, Mike Philibaum, who won that in Atlanta earlier this year and trying to win both of the majors here in 2021. He's facing Robert Young, who came out of one of those four brackets. An incredible story from Anchorage, Alaska. First throw of this first semifinal. Actually, see, that was the final warm-up toss. And so this will be the first one. So kind of an underdog story, Evan, with Robert Young making it and Philibaum a chance to really cement himself as the face of the sport if he can win a U.S. Open and a world title all in the same year. Philibaum has honestly been dominating this entire year. He's been traveling to many, many tournaments, not typically placing anything shorter than third place. But more often than not, he's been taking them. with a smooth consistency like that one, splitting that middle bullseye. Six. But matched by Robert Young and Ben McDonald, who's as much a star on the sport as anybody. Our referee confirming Throw number that. Two. Again, best two out of three. Ten throws, two chances to go for those eight-point kill shots at any point in time in the match, although we have seen at the highest levels that players typically will wait that out. As you mentioned, these players are the best of the best, the highest level that we have in this competition. It's going to be pretty rare that we don't see a lot of bullseyes going on. It, they make it look extremely easy, but I guarantee you it's very difficult. Throw number three. And for the highest level competitors in the sport, the tightening of that bullseye circle, many of them said have actually made it easier to focus because the target's gotten smaller. Not necessarily easier to score, but easier to focus. A uh, common phrase throughout the axe throwing community is aim small, miss small. There's been no misses through six, six combined six. throws. Three bullseyes apiece. Young hit at a 60% clip through Tied yesterday's 18. double this elimination bracket. Philibaum at an 81% bullseye clip yesterday to advance here to the semifinals. This is first Young's first time on ESPN before and the first time he's made it this far in any of our big, larger, major tournaments. So the six, nerves might five. be getting to him, but he got that six. Yeah, Philibon makes the first mistake, missing low on target, but low. By one point, throw number five, last throw on this side. So in our standard competitions, the, the players will throw five throws and then switch targets changes things up a little bit, makes things a little more difficult because they have to recenter their balance and focus. Five, Two five. misses of the center bullseye, but Young dodges the bullet. Uh, Philibaum drawing back even, maintains a one-point edge as they switch targets. Young leads by one point at the switch. That's got to be a bit of a confidence booster for Young considering how Philibaum has been going throughout this year. Six, five. And we are knotted up after six throws. You mentioned how strong Philibaum has been. His last five sets yesterday to make it into the semifinal, he missed his target. And by that, either the bullseye number seven. or the kill shot just five times in five sets.
you have to have a track record like that just to be able to get to this level of competition. Six, five. And now Philibon, the favorite, you would think, takes a one-point edge, three throws to go. Philibon leads by one, three throws left. Might be Six, just a little four. too far out. Yep, with the four call. And part of that blade has to be inside Throw number nine, the 46 paint. 46 to 43. Not just on the Two line. Two shots left. Three points separating us. Three point difference. Neither player has called a kill shot. Oh, there it Young is. Young is there. going up. Young, down three, has to try and make up the gap. Got it. Six, hit. And throwing significantly longer in terms of time after Philibom, you can't really catch yourself looking, but you know, you have a feeling what's happening, and you're adding both that additional pressure. And now it's just a one point lead. They both will go for the kill shot, and this will determine the first set win. There is a 10-second rule, so if they take a little bit too long, they may cause themselves a fault, but they're taking quite a bit of time to measure just because any slight millimeter of difference. Both hit, and I think Young knew that he was already done after Philibon's axe traveled, so by a narrow one-point margin, it's Mike Philibon taking first. set number we one in this best two out of practice. three. And they each have the opportunity to take one practice throw, which allows us a chance and not only to catch their breath and figure it out, but Evan, we are pleased to be joined by another expert in the sport and one of the best characters and most beloved members of the axe throwing community. Rob Leverance is with us. and. Boy, Rob, there's some tension going on in this room right now, huh? Yeah, you can you can see it in Robin Game Young's two, hand right number now. One. He, his first three throws, he was solid, hitting the bullseye right in the middle. The next three throws, his hand started to shake, and he progressively threw worse. And with that four, even though he lost that first round, you saw him hit both those kills. It's a good comeback, and that's momentum for him, even though he lost that first round. Yep. And both players five, are going to miss the target on their first throw. So number two, we're tied. I was watching the competitions yesterday and it seemed to be about the same. And honestly, even just watching them practice in the back, they were telling me that the, uh, even just in practice, they felt like they had to be at top peak form and their hands were still shaking, just getting ready for the, uh, just getting ready five, for the uh, competition today. Robert Young started getting ready this morning with, uh, with music. Still tied. Maybe that's three. how he gets himself in the throw zone. He just gets him pumped up, amped up. And you can sense the tension here just because of how precise they have to be. And typically it's a bit more of a camaraderie sport, but when you get to this level with this much on the line. Every one of these throws, you feel five. pressure. You know if you have one miss at the end of the match. One miss can cost you the match. A perfect game can be dropped at any moment. Kill shots can be thrown at 9 and 10. Four. It's important to stay focused on each throw and enjoy that moment and ride the wave.
Philibaum finding Six, rhythm five. and now taking a two-point lead. And Rob, this is such a different environment. To wait to come here. This there is now so was the ability five, to warm up, but not on these on boards. Side. So under the lights, I mean, there's just a 20. lot of things going on in between the ears. Let's, uh, I mean, let's be real about this situation. <laughs> these throws are on ESPN. It's a big deal for them. This is this is something that they've always wanted to happen in their axe throwing career. This is kind of the pinnacle of what's going on right now. Robert Young, a fairly inexperienced thrower compared to Philip Baum, who is our defending U.S. Open champion. Uh, big X and in Hatchet. Uh, his, his ring is being worn right now on his left hand as a guide to help him hit those bullseyes. 28-26, Philip Baum leads by two. You notice that these throwers, when they walk back to the line, Six, that 12-foot football line, they're looking down. They don't want to look up those bright lights. It's something they're definitely not used to seeing. Uh, can cause distraction. Philemon mm. thought he had caught the bullseye there. Ben McDonald said no. Five points. Shakes his head coming back. Now just up one with four throws to go. Looks like he regained his composure, though, which is good. Five, six. And he gets that one point edge back. Interesting flooring Bob setup here. We have panel two. floor, wood panel flooring, which gives throwers a lot of throw guidance with their feet when they line up for the targets. Uh, a lot of throwers will pick a spot on the floor, whether it be a crack, a mark, a chalk line relative to the board to make sure they line up the path of their axe in order to get the trajectory right to hit that bullseye. It's one thing a lot of people don't think Five, about when they're throwing six. axes. It's not just where your hand's going. You have to center your entire body in one particular line just to make sure that the guy's right. If you get your arm moving in the same path every time, that axe is going to go wherever your release point is. So as long as you have that release shot. point within that same small window, that inch and a half bullseye will be hit every time. So a lot of throwers have that path nailed down in the delivery, that muscle memory. So as long as they line up left to right at the same spot, which is great with these floors, you can so pick out a small yes. spot, line up in the same spot, and follow that same path line for that ax. It is extremely beneficial for this particular tournament, but even just throughout the entire weekend, throwing at different venues and going back and forth and then having to do the finals here in a different location changes things up, but... Hit! And again, a three-point deficit in this set. Robert Young comes up clutch, hits the kill shot on throw number nine to make it a one-point deficit. And we will effectively have Phil Obama make to move on to the finals. But again, his strategy made for him with that make by Young on throw nine to go upstairs. And I believe he's connected. I'm not so sure. Well, from that down angle. No, it needs to break paint, break paint on both sides of that axe. I'm not convinced that it is on the left side. Oh, that Just one. underneath. Miss, two. Miss. two misses. The door was open for Robert Young, and he couldn't walk on through. And that punches a trip to the finals for Mike Philibom. He's one win away from the U.S. Open World Championship double. You can see the nerves a little bit in that championship, but he did just enough and perhaps learn from it as well with the championship coming up a little bit later. He's actually got some knives to throw to on the broadcast today, but that is a confident, confident thrower heading into the finals coming up a little bit later. As we take a look at our guaranteed rate replay from our first semifinal, it came down to the very last couple of throws, but a couple of leads early in this one, Evan, gave Mike Philibaum just enough of an edge to have that sort of scoring advantage at the end. Just that little bit is all it takes. So Philibaum, who was expected to perhaps be in that championship, earns his spot there. Garrett Knighting and Jeff Cope will battle for the other spot coming up in that championship. But Philibaum through, now all left to be determined is who he will play. We'll find that out. Second semifinal coming up right after this.
Halfway to determining our championship contenders in the hatchet division of the World Axe Throwing Championship. We'll ask it back with Evan Walters, Rob Leverance also along as we get set for our second semifinal showdown to find out who's going to face Mike Philibaum for a world championship. There's a look at Garrett Knighting. It's his birthday today. Pace in Utah out of Premier Throwing. And there you see the bio on him. He's been under the lights before Evan and may have an opportunity to pull off of those experiences and what he's faced being on this show before. Honestly, I think that's what's going to give him the edge over this match. If, uh, if I had to guess, with uh, Nighting's experience on the TV and Cope being a little bit well, behind the ears, but, I mean, they're both fantastic throwers. But when we get to this level, it's all about that mental game. But, Rob, we're in Texas. Jeff Cope from down the road in Houston. And the only one of the four semifinalists who had to go down to the B bracket, had to go down and, and fight your way out of, for people to understand, double elimination tournament to get to this moment in time. So I had to go through the loser's bracket to get back up here. That sometimes can play into some advantages. You've been up against Is the ropes already in this track. tournament as they have their final practice throw. That's right. He, he went down to the B bracket, and he ended up playing a, n a total of nine games in 23 total rounds. It's 230 throws compared to Garrett, who was only six games, 18 rounds, 180 throws. A little bit more uh, practice from yesterday. <laughs> So their practice throws are in. It's time to go. There's some tension in here. I think the only way to take the tension out is just look over at the guy you're playing and say, look, let's have some fun. Let's try and do something special here. Let's throw some, let's see if we can throw a 64 on the board and get this place going. No matter who takes it, they're both here right now. I think they're both super proud about it. Yeah. Appears to be a good, clean start Six. for both, and Six. it is. And there's a lot on the line. You know, there's some good money on the line. Six thousand dollars to the winner of this one. But just by getting here, that's a three thousand dollar guarantee. So it's, two. it's really more guys. The, the prestige uh, in, within this community. It's not necessarily what's going in your pocket. Yeah, everybody wants that. Everyone wants that title of world champion, and everyone wants to take down that nice little axe. But uh, even still, they're here now, and that's all it matters. Six. Six. Both these guys guaranteed at least $3,000. It's a nice birthday present for Gary. Yeah. I asked Jeff Cope yesterday how he felt about guaranteed $3,000. Right his now. response was, the money's nice and all, but I just want the respect from the community as being a good thrower and, and being able to earn my spot where I'm at right now, which I he certainly has done. I think we can safely say that anyone who's gotten to this level of competition has earned a great amount of respect Six. for Six. their skill alone. Perfect start in those throws. I haven't really seen a whole lot of wiggle or wobble in the arms of either one of these gentlemen trying to Still play their tied. way into the finals. Throw four. Four for four each. Six. We'll take it. Six. Both these opponents are fairly tall opponents. Jeff Cope stands at six foot four. Garrett Netting, there's nothing to reference right now but the, the bullseye standing at uh, 16 inches side. off the ground, 5 feet. Both these t components are, uh, are, are very tall. Which you wouldn't normally think would be a bit of an edge, but, you know, with the, with the height comes slightly longer arms, which means you're a little closer to the target sometimes. Not quite at 12 feet in yeah. the football line. Mm -hmm. Five, six. The first miss comes from Jeff Cope. Will he go to the chalk after that one, guys? He's got the... He's got the the rising bag on the back there. Netting leads by one, 30 to 29. He, uh, yesterday he pulled out some Skittles out of that, <laughs> out of that bucket. <laughs> I hope that it's not Skittles this time. <laughs> Cope back to landing that butcher blade flat. Five, that last five. throw he over-rotated. He would have landed it flat like he normally does. He would have ended up with a bullseye on that last throw. Back to a normal flat, flat landing there. Well, the butcher in particular is extremely important seven. to land flat because if you land flat, it gives you the maximum coverage on that board that you can get with any axe available out there. But all it takes is a slight over or under rotation. You don't get that maximum value for it. Cope told me that his, uh, his Six, game elevated once five. he got a custom handle. <laughs> Texas made tool company handled his, uh, his sponsor. Got a lighter handle on that and allowed him to get a better rotation left. on that a little bit Garrett faster than his last two. axe. These are tight. 
tight six, for Ben. Six. And he finds that both of them are on the bullseye. That was a big throw for Jeff Cope heading into where are likely going to be a couple of kill shots in just a two-point game. 47-45. Question mark? Throw number nine. Yeah, there it goes. Knew you had to in a two-point game, right? Like this, this is the only shot for Jeff Cope to win at this point. Got a little bit of extra chalk. I think that seals the deal. All right, they both nail it. Still a two-point edge going to the final throw. Knighting actually had to shake off a little bug that was flying right around his head and his ax this as he got to the top shot. of his foreman Barely and was able to. And they're shot. both going kill shot to the last one here in the first set. <laughs> Two makes. Oh, a kill shot. Strong finish. Pretty clean throw and giving him everything that's on the line there, gentlemen, in that first game of the semifinal. And Knighting nearly perfect on those 10 throws. They'll take their one practice shot here, but that was some really high-level action between those two guys. Absolutely. Forces to be reckoned with, both of them. So we settle in for just a practice throw. Getting maybe a little of the nerves out. Jared's throw is a perfect example of how you want to have. Take, try and take your Get fingers out of the throw. Two, he, his fingers are only a pivot ready. point. He does not use his fingers at all in his throw. It's just merely a spot for the axe to rotate out of. He grips it deep in his hand, comes through, and throws pure almost yeah. every time. Good start six, for both here six. in this second game. Should be pointed out, Garrett Knighting didn't lose a match in his road to the semifinal, but did Five, have to six. go to a two. third game in all six of those matches. So he knows what it takes to be clutch, to get through. So he expects a long road, you would imagine, in this semifinal matchup. But that might uh, that might be good in comparison to uh, what some would argue for. You get some extra throws in, get to be a little bit more practice. Five, six. Knighting missing just for the second time in this semifinal match to give Pope Post his first eight, lead. One. At any 11, juncture in this semifinal three. match. Six, five. And Rob, how important is it? You hear a lot of times talk, you just missed the bullseye by a hair. I think a lot of people watching at home would think, four, what's the correction? as opposed to just going back and trusting the process. One of the great things about ax throwing is, it, versus any other sports is you get immediate feedback from when your ax lands on the board based on how it angles Six, into the board, five. based on if it's right or left, up or down. When you see one fade or slice a little bit to the left or right, throw five, that's the path throw on to this the board. Side. Uh, usually you get one. a little amped up, your adrenaline might be flowing, you might push it out a little bit right, you might pull it which seems to be the case on that last throw with Jeff Cope. In many cases, you can feel the ax as it leaves your hand. Before it's even hit into the board, six, you know whether or six. not you threw well or not. So many times you want that ax back as soon as it leaves your hand. There's nothing to do about that. <laughs> How long is it floating in the air before it makes contact <laughs> after a bad throw, right? 29, 28. Feels like an eternity. Knighting leads by one point. Five, six. Cope barely got that ax inside the circle to get the five, but now is down to four throws to go. Nutting leads by this two is one of those points, cases where there is a little bit of pressure on you seven. as a thrower. A lot of these throwers will say there is no pressure on yourself, but there is. In the back of your mind, you know you have to hit this shot, which is why it's important to take each shot individually. Each throw is different. Six, each throw is separate. Five. Make the adjustments, hit your shots. At the end of the day, all you have to do is hit your shots. Yeah, Jeff Cook told me earlier, I, I'm not playing the guy next to me. Throw number I'm playing eight. the board. Nutting leads by one point, 40 to 39. Unfortunately, we know the score. <laughs> so we also know what else is at play. Too good. 
good throws, I believe. Six, six. Yes. So just Nighting, uh, he's coming off of a big victory at Waddle Major at Social Axe, his home affiliate uh, in Salt Lake City. Throw number it's a big nine, monkey off his back coming into this world championship. Both players have called kill shots. Kill shots going to decide this one a close one. Who could potentially blink? Not Ooh, knighting, but that might be wide. Miss oh. hit! And that will do it. It'll make it a nine point edge. Final shot. Both and players this is an inconsequential shot. throw given the gap with the miss. And I mean, that was by a whisker for Cope. No consolation to make it on the final throw. It'll only determine what the final Hit, marker is. Garrett it ends up being a one-point win, but an inconsequential final throw. And for the first time in this tournament, guys, Garrett Knighting doesn't need a third game to advance. It'll be Knighting and Philobom coming up in the finals a little bit later. That was some high-level stuff. Absolutely. Just all it takes. I mean, he even touched the side of that kill shot with that blade, but it has to be on both sides, and that's all it took, millimeters. Rob, we take a look at this guaranteed rate replay. What did you love the most about what you saw from Garrett Knighting to perhaps make him a world champion later today? Uh, it's a special moment for him with his birthday. Uh, his throw is just so consistent when he follows through. It's the same spot that he releases every single time, which makes him one of the best and the last year's fifth place in, the, in WATC. So Knighting, just by that little whisker there at the end, and that final kill shot gets it done. These two are seated, Philobom and Knighting, one and two after the preliminaries to get him to the semifinals because of their bullseye percentages. So one versus two is what we will have coming up later on in the broadcast to crown our 2021 World Axe Throwing Champion in the hatchet. But coming up next, let's make the axes bigger, shall we? Yeah. Let's have some fun. Big Axe Championship right after this. The World Axe Throwing League introduced Big Axe Leagues and tournaments in the fall of 2020 to diversify the competition within axe throwing. For the purposes of Big Axe Throwing in the WATL, a Big Axe is considered to be any axe longer than 23 inches and heavier than 3 pounds. Big Axe games are half the length of a standard WATL hatchet game consisting of only 5 throws and because of this, accuracy and kill shots become even more important. Misses will add up quickly with less time to make up for poor throws. The importance of the kill shot can be demonstrated in no better way than the crazy finish we had in the Big Axe competition at the 2020 World Axe Throwing Championship. Up just a single point, Zach Crawford decided to take the game into his own hands and call the kill shot on his fifth and final throw. If he hit it, the game would remain out of reach, even if his opponent, Jonathan Morgan, called and hit a kill shot of his own. That's exactly what happened. Both throwers nailed that final kill shot. Crawford celebrated his 29-28 victory over his good friend Morgan. The excitement from Big Axe competition comes from the variance created by throwing a larger and heavier axe. This makes the axe harder to control and as such can lead to more room for error. Despite this added difficulty, it is still rare for top level competitors to throw outside of the four ring. And Evan, as our finalists warm up for this Big Axe competition, there's a look at Mark Mirasol. He's from Albany, left. New York. You can hear two throws left to go. He's got a custom-made axe as he advanced his way out of that B bracket to get here. So he had to survive a difficult ro road to get into this championship. He's facing Josh Russo from Columbus, Ohio. He's about ready to graduate from Ohio State after a six-year tour of duty in the Marines. He's a psychology major, major, actually a child psychology major. So he's played the, the mental side of it, the mental game. This is going to be a really fun one to watch between technique, process, staying grounded. Again, only five throws per game. So it comes at you quickly. Yeah, it's going to be real quick, but every single throw just matters that much more. And after seeing the performances yesterday of both players, it's going to be a hard toss up to see who takes it. Russo missing high on his last practice throw. A big deep breath as 
They get set to throw Wait, for no, this ready? championship. This is throw one, game one. We've really seen the technique of this sport almost adopting much of the smaller hatchet configurations. It used to be a bigger sort of action, but trying to simplify and get this sport a little bit tighter. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, trying to trying to go back and forth between Five, four. You know, throwing with just one hand versus two. You know, a lot of people will throw big axes with two hands, but if they can keep the technique the same, typically they like to do that, especially going from Throw one competition two. to the next. But even still, it takes that much more strength just to throw a bigger axe with one hand. Five, four. And the maximum score possible is 32, but you don't see the same level of bullseye consistency, and that has a lot of factors to three. go into that. Absolutely. With Rooks the, with the weight two. of those axes and the fact that they're still throwing just with one hand, it's a lot more difficult to maintain that accuracy that you do. And even some of the rotation is hard to get. Five, five. You really have to depend on the weight of the axe head in order to get it to rotate properly. But even see, still, as you saw with Mirasol's axe, it almost didn't rotate all the way. It, the handle bunked the uh, end of the target there. We got a solid bullseye with Mark Mirasol. It was a throw he needed as Russo is going to register five points for his fourth five, straight throw. Six. But that gets Mirasol within one, and now decision time here in the final throw this of this first final game. Shot. Mirasol is called kill shots. Russo is called kill shots as well. They're both going up. Wow. And how big that point gained on the fourth throw impacts that strategy. Now it will not matter after Mirasol's has missed the board. And Russo goes ahead and makes contact hey, just to man. leave no doubt and is up one game to none here in this best Russo of three to a championship. Let's quickly Let's check in with Morgan Uber. I'm here with so Fran Lopez, shot. and Fran, you are a practice. big axe expert. This is your area of expertise. What would you say to those that want to try it but might be intimidated by the larger axe? Absolutely. So I would definitely say, please try it. You never know how much fun you're going to have. And, you know, just like you don't quit going to the gym if you don't make the Olympics team, have fun with it. This is such a unique sport with the camaraderie, with the community. You know these two competitors very well. What are some things that people might not know about them that are watching at home? Definitely. So Joss is actually one of the founders of Valkyrie and Steel, which is the team that competed in the first melee competition this week on Thursday and actually took home the world championship and Mark is one of the co-owners of Lazy Axe with his wife and he's actually a fantastic foodie so definitely asking for advice if you're at a tournament with him. Fran what makes the Big Axe such a unique exciting challenge? Well obviously from you know the fact that it is bigger it actually in my opinion is an exaggeration of your hatchet so any tiny mistake you make in your hatchet throw is actually more exaggerated in big axe but it's actually also just a lot of fun brand thank you so much thank you well so far josh russo's having all of the fun in this championship showdown but five, five. both of those throws just off the mark and a one point edge three throws to go here in this second game and a lot to take away from there and, and not just that throw you know, three. Fran's been a big part of this community, and we're getting pretty close, aren't we, Evan, to having a female finalist in one of these disciplines, you would imagine, here in the coming years. For sure. Uh, honestly, this particular tournament, uh, we've had more female representation than we've had ever before, and we just see that growing every year. We love to see it. But both of these six, throwers six. really starting to settle in here. The question is, with Mirasol down one game to none, is Russo going to provide an throw opening? Four. To come back. Russo still leads 17 to 16. Ooh, I'll take on that throw for just a little bit. Well, 
Another center strike. Russo has found the throwing touch. Six, six. And has a one-point lead going to the final throw. I should note, Josh Russo did not lose an in single game in his pathway to this championship. Went to sudden death once. They're both going to the kill shot. And if Russo can connect with one of those two blue dots, it will complete a perfect run to a title. Amir Sol in his bracket, he had to fight up from the B bracket down below, and it was such a fight to watch, but solid kill shot. So nose and misses. Okay. Hit, miss. Amir Sol still has a chance. You can hear the exhale from the crowd because we are leveled up at a game apiece. Amir They'll take switch take sides two. and play. Five throws to determine the champion, and they will each take their practice throw. And for the first time in this tournament, Josh Russo has to ask a question, maybe. Yeah, it's there's no safety net for him now. He has to either just take it or have it be taken. Russo was a wrestler in the Marine Corps as well, competing athletically. I asked him what the connection was. Is there any connection to wrestling in the here? And he says, hey, you're focusing on the one task, whatever it might be within the sport. But he said he's been really Don't good at one. always being able to block everything out. Mm. In competitions like this, it's mostly that mental game. You have to be able to just clear your mind. The parasol got up there, wasted no time. Six! And on the very top end of that bullseye circle, Russo is able to match. You know, two completely different rhythms of approach as well between these two battling out to, to be a world two. champion. Just to the left. And Russo misses as well, but I believe caught. Five, the five, five. points circle, he does. And we stay tied with three to go. The one thing that's really interesting to mention, since you mentioned their rhythms, if you watch the two, Mirasol likes three, to do kind of almost a little tied. jump to help propel that axe forward. Russo's a little more rigid, but still gets that proper arc in. Two clutch strikes. Six. Six. On that third throw. This is pretty high level stuff. This is throw four, tied at 17. Solid connect on that bullseye right down the middle. And Max, <laughs> as perfect of a throw as you could get in this discipline. This honestly may be the most intense match that we're going to see today. Third and final match. Whoever wins this takes it home. They are tied up. And they are both going kill shot, as you would expect. All comes down to the one throw for who's going to be the Big Axe World Champion. Got the top of it. I think that is in the blue. As yeah. is that one. Wow. We might be going to a sudden death. Hit! Hit! All right, walk us through it, Evan. What do we got? We got extra throws. That's right. We have a sudden death, which means they have kill shots or nothing. <laughs> As you can hear the crowd chanting, they're going to be going for. the kill shot takes it? Closest to the kill shot. Yes. They they don't have to hit the kill shot, but they will have to get the closest yeah. to it. You have to Final shoot for throw. it, and it will be. If you both miss, who ends up closest? That's pretty the close. Pretty low though. Ooh. Ooh. It's hard to say. We are going to measure. They're going to have to get the tape out. Mirasol low, Russo to the left. Oh, so this is this is unprecedented. They both just gave themselves footballs. The scores they, were not tallied. The call was not made. They gave themselves footballs, so they have to throw again. They didn't want it to come down to a Second measurement overtime throw. with it being that close. So <laughs> a gentleman's game. Wow. Mirasol 
this and blow again. Russo. Oh, low as well. That's definitely farther away. And Mark takes it. And there's not going to be any debate. Mark Mirasol. With 2021. Unbelievable. World Big Axe Champion. So many clutch throws, and neither could get up and hit that kill shot when it mattered most. Mirasol, the closest, survives on the second sudden death throw. Gets that signature axe, and he will send it. The crowd chants, send it. He boarded it, and he's going to win $3,500 as a big axe champion. Exciting stuff from Mark Mirasol, and what an incredible final that was. Morgan? Mark, after being down one nothing, how were you able to regain your composure and focus to win the World Championships today? Yeah, I just told myself to just throw. It's the same thing as every other time that I've come up to that line and thrown. So, yeah, just try not to get it get to my head. For both of you to take a foot fault there and step forward, you didn't want it to come down to the measurement. Why? Well, yeah, I, it's... It's not as satisfying when you win like that. Obviously, you want to hit the kill shot. Um, and that one was too close to call, so we just decided we're going to go and give it another shot. Mark, congratulations. Thank You're a so world much. champion. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty incredible sportsmanship there from the two of them to make sure that it went down the way that it did. But Mark Mirasol can now call himself a world axe throwing champion in big axe. Let's get the teams out there, shall we? We'll settle the duels final next. First debuted in our broadcast during the 2020 World Axe Throwing Championships, our duels competition brings an extra layer of strategy and entertainment to our classic hatchet events. The fundamental difference in duels competition is that instead of one thrower per target, there is now two throwers simultaneously throwing at each target. Teams of two compete against each other and the highest combined score after five throws is declared the winner. This has quickly become one of the more popular competitions among throwers and spectators as it not only involves more strategy, but can also lead to some entertaining mishaps and climactic finishes. And with the introduction of the smaller bullseye here in 2021, axe throwers have adapted different strategies for achieving high scores. When the margin for error is less than an inch while throwing from 12 feet away, you can certainly see where the difficulty lies. One change to all World Axe Throwing League disciplines this year is the addition of the open kill shot. This means throwers are allowed to announce their kill shot attempts at any point in time during the game. And now with duels down to just five throws per round, teammates are not required to call kill shots at the same time, but that allows for much more strategy and many situations where they don't have to compete for the same one and a half inch bullseye. On rare occasions, we can have what's called as a Robin Hood. This happens when one ax, instead of being lodged in the target, becomes lodged in the teammate's ax. If this happens, the score of the ax stuck in the target is then doubled. So if an ax in the target is a five, the total score for that throw becomes a 10. And time to determine who our duels champion is gonna be here in 2021. And the only one of our four disciplines that has a chance at a reigning champion, or in this case, champions, to do it again. That would be Lucas Johnson and Hayden Brown, the duo from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, won this World Axe Throwing Championship in duels shot. a year ago, Evan, and trying to sort of cement themselves as the best duels team in the land. And again, and they're U.S. Open runner-ups as well. Yeah, this is the first time that we've had reigning champions make it all the way back to the finals for a competition. It's very exciting to see. They're facing Colby Dean and Michael Theodoro. Theodoro made the U.S. Open television show on the singles competition of Hatchet, ended up being the runner-up to Mike Philibon. There's his partner, Colby Dean. And again, just five throws, which has really changed how these duos approach this, is throw this one, quick race one. to five throws to figure out the strategy. Yeah, I mean, with every single tiny amount of throws that you have, it just makes it that much more important. Part of the rules, those axes have to Six, depart five, five, five. within a certain time of one another as a bullseye hit from Dean and Theodoro give him a one point lead after the first throw. So you can't see what your partner does and then throw, throw the axe. Two. There has to be simultaneous axes in the air. Yeah, you have to be in sync with the other person you're throwing with. 
Johnson and Brown often like to rhythmically count down to their throw, but not everybody does that. But who knows? They're the world champion, so they got to do something right. Four, five, four. Similar scores. So the lead stays one. This is throw number three. Dean Thordaro leads by one. Ooh, we have a drop. Right, right a drop. One, two, three. So a non-scoring throw, which then really changes. Six, drop. Six, five. So you're going to put a five-point swing on that throw for Lucas Johnson and Hayden Brown. So they claim a four-point lead with two throws to go. There are two throws left. The score is 30 to 26. That is a, a large point difference that they're going to have to make up. In this competition in particular, it's almost better to try to have just one person go for the bullseye and the other person just get a solid five. It's really the safest bet you can do. Six, four, five, five. Yeah, 11 points is probably considered with the smaller bullseye. Not the obviously the best that you can do, but a really successful turn. If you can be consistent with just 36. those 11 points, then honestly, you're doing pretty well. All right, so with both teams getting 10. Brown is staying down. And a four-point lead. Both Colby Dean and Michael Theodoro going for the kill shot ones. While Lucas Johnson's going to go up. Ooh, those Look. both connected. A little bit of pressure on both Brown and Johnson. Uh, it doesn't matter. Johnson connects, and it will be a wide margin. Ends up being a two-point victory for the reigning world champions as they take a one-game-to-none lead in this race in a best-of-three. Let's check in with Morgan Uber. I'm here alongside Jave Yashimoto, a professor in art at the University of Nebraska who has his latest masterpiece here. Jave, show us this axe that you made by hand, and what are some of the special features here? Well, this is an uh, axe that's based on Art Deco theme and Art Nouveau. Uh, I had my friend Anissa um, pose for me for a photo shoot, and I did the graphic design around uh, the image, and I made an Art Deco themed um, homage to uh, uh, six, 64 points, which is a perfect score in axe throwing. And so I made different themes, such as um, going up for two, uh, the extra points and uh, different themes of the more of the inlays with the 73 different pieces of wood of exotic woods um, and more features of my friend Caitlin here and some more image of Elisa so yeah how long did this take you to make this I worked about three weeks straight about between six, six to twelve six, hours a day six, to work on this it's a beautiful piece and everyone was taking a look here earlier today we got a close look at it earlier Will and Evan, back to you guys. It's a beautiful piece of work, and how about a beautiful piece of throwing? Well, that happens. Four two. bullseyes, two perfect 12s. They begin game number two. Definitely starting out with a bang. One, two, three. Going to be close for back-to-back -back double bulls for Dean and Theodoro. Four, five, five, five. Just cut on that line for Brown. Put it, but he didn't cross over, so I put him in the four category. So it takes just a the score slight is loss. 22, it was 21, an interesting start yesterday in the duels three. competition for the reigning world champions. Lucas Johnson and Hayden Brown lost their opening match. And talking to Hayden Brown earlier today, he said, yeah, we, the, we thought we were done. We knew how hard the path would be. And just kind of found a little something, found some confidence, and here they are with a chance to be world champions again. Throughout the Six, year, we haven't been five, they haven't been able five, to compete too five. much together, and so they were, but they earned their spot. They had to be the reigning world champions to come back, and so they came back just to compete. And you know, like you Star mentioned, four, they thought they were out, but they found their right groove now. again. Two shots and they left. Have tied it up already, up one game to none. Two throws to go here. Game number two. It's a good start from Dean and Theodoro. One, two, three. Oh, a nervous moment every time those axe heads collide. Couldn't ask for a closer grouping. Five, five, six, five. 
but maybe that left axe accident may have actually pushed the other axe into the five as opposed to that four. That's why we heard that little that little clink of the axes in midair. Everybody going up. The crowd loves the kill shot. And the benefit of having a one-shot lead here, if Dean and Theodoro can both connect, they will force that decisive third game. And I don't believe they did. That one missed. Theodoro's pretty close, but I'm not sure if it got on that kill shot or not. Both of those look to have connected. And if they did... Hey! They have repeated as world champions. Lucas Johnson and Hayden Brown thought they were out of it early yesterday and run the table after an opening loss to repeat as the duels champion. And the face of the two-man game in this sport right there, Lucas Johnson and Hayden Brown, what a run. First time ever a reigning champion has taken it again. This is Axe throwing history in the making. They take a lot of pride in the work that they have put in, the strategy, and they even count it down to send it to the same kill shot. But what a great experience for a couple of guys that found the sport together. Lucas Brown, excuse me, Hayden Brown once worked for Lucas at the Axe facility that he owned, and they are champions in duels for the second consecutive year. Congratulations to our duels winners. All right, let's transition. We gotta swap some boards out because we're gonna throw knives next for a world title. Welcome to the World Knife Throwing League. Created by the same team that brought the World Axe Throwing League and Urban Axe Throwing to the masses, the World Knife Throwing League looks to take the sport of knife throwing from the backyards across the world to the living rooms of millions at home. The World Axe Throwing League was able to leverage their 350 plus affiliate locations, allowing them to build out the infrastructure for a new urban knife throwing sports league. And after years of planning many iterations of rules, knives, and targets, the WKTL has arrived in 2021 and made its debut at the U.S. Open. The World Knife Throwing League borrows many of the rules from the World Axe Throwing League with a few notable exceptions. And if you're familiar with the sport of axe throwing, you will know that throwers collect their axes after every throw and return to the fault line. But in the WKTL, throwers alternate between three throws and two throws at each distance before retrieving the knives. This adds an extra layer of difficulty to the sport to avoid knocking existing knives out of the target. Knives are only scored immediately before retrieval, so if a knife falls to the ground as the result of another throw, it will be scored as a zero. The World Knife Throwing League has introduced a new target design that has three bullseyes. The WKTL targets look very similar to those of the WATL, with the addition of two bullseyes located above and below the center bullseye. These play into the strategy of the game, but also make it possible to score three bullseyes in a single set of throws. The order of throws look like this. Three single rotation throws from the 10-foot line, then the knives are retrieved. Two single rotation throws from the 10-foot line, and after five throws of single rotation at the 10-foot line, competitors switch sides. You then have three double rotation throws from beyond the minimum of 15 feet with that line, then the knives are retrieved, and then two more double rotation throws from beyond the minimum 15-foot line. You can learn more at WorldKnifeThrowingLeague.com. Obviously a passion project for you, Evan Walters, as we get ready to crown our first ever World Knife Throwing Champion. And we learned a little bit in that video about it. The points are going to look the same, Evan, but a different looking board to really make this a, a spicy competition. Absolutely. We have a particular amount of grouping and whatnot. We're throwing multiple knives at the boards before we're going to retrieve. That's why we have those three bullseyes right in the middle. But we still have those eight points, those six points, and those kill shots you can call. 
But also keep in mind, the scoring circles, the big scoring circles around the top and the bottom bullseye are still those original we're point values. So we're seeing right a now. lot of guys that will still throw all three knives at the middle because if you miss, you're getting five or four points as opposed to potentially five or two points if you miss high or low to the middle bullseye, correct? That is absolutely correct. But we also have a lot of folks who don't want to vary their throws high or low too much. They want to stay consistent, so they're actually practicing more of the grouping into the individual center. And we'll see as the, as the sport progresses how that's going to develop. All right, so our first three throws from the first 10-foot line. Mike Philibon against Shane Shepard to determine the first world knife-throwing champion. Again, two axe specialists. Throw number two. Taking their hatchet skills and developed into knife throwing for this competition. You can see Throw number three. Mentioning that, that grouping, Philibon moving kind of slightly left and right of each, act, of each knife. That way he can hopefully get in that bullseye just like he did. He did. He needed it after missing his second throw up to where I believe it was only going to be four. Six, five, four. Six, four, four. For a one-point edge after three throws for Shane Shepard. Get your calculators out at home. You got a lot of quick math to do in knife throwing. Score is 15 to 14. That's why we have our head judge and assisting four. judge. And again, same Go rule five. applies where they have to split the paint, so they have to get color on both sides of that knife in the scoring area for it to count. Knives down. Also, one thing that they also must do is they must have the tip of the blade in the wood. Five, 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 five. Right, so matching throws, and now we'll step back to the two rotations from all the way back. Mike Philibom, again, so much attention Switch was going to be on his pursuit of the Hatchet World Championship, but made it into Chef this knife throwing one, final 25, by beating really the favorite six. in the sport. The reigning U.S. Open champion and Travis Blank beat him in his path to reach this final. That was, I wouldn't say necessarily a stunner, but certainly one of the first real stories of this week. Throw seven. We have our first drop, which, again, can be pretty devastating, but they do have the option for those kill shots. Still. We haven't seen a whole lot of kill shots yet in this knife throwing competition. They are very risky, but I think at this point, Philibon's going to have to go for it. Five, three, drop. Six, four, four. That's a massive lead going into the final two throws for Shane Shepard. He mentioned Mike Philbaum did not attempt a single kill shot in the road to this championship. Two throws and this left. competition is just Shepard getting leads. fired up. We have a, a lot of folks who are just trying knife throwing out for this year. We really expect that next year to be the knife, the year of the knife. We're just trying to make sure this he gets is throw it number on 10. the board. Now you can see they're throwing from a slightly larger distance, which also makes more rotations and harder to stick. And an opening there, but I don't think the math's going to work out on that last throw. A bullseye would have made it really tight. Five, four, four, drop. So he needed to make up seven and only made up the five did Philibom on that throw. So Shane Shepard takes this and first 40, game 41. by two Jeff points. Takes game one. We have one practice throw. So again, so much of the, the volatility, the variance again, the drops becoming a big part of that strategy. As we'll get one practice throw here, Shepard up one game to none in this best two out of three. Shepard looking down at his feet, he actually started with just a score of 18 in his first game out in the bracket and made a foot adjustment. Looked down, took one right. actual full foot one. step to the line. That was what he needed for the rotation, and it's been all success ever since in getting into this final. Again, as Rev as Leverance mentioned earlier, Throw two. it's a, actually a benefit to have this type of patterned floor. That way they can see exactly where their feet go and can readjust and realign. Throw three. Same thing applies for knife throwing. Very good grouping of the knives on both their throwers' parts. Six, six, four. Five, four, four. 
So a good start for Mike Philibaum, needing to win back-to-back -back games to be the first ever World Knife Throwing League champion. And again, a negligible difference in terms of prize money. 1,500 to the 16 winner, 1,000 to second, but both of these Three gentlemen points battling to be the four. first. And that is something that years from now, no one will be able to take away. Throw five. Those are two really good throws on the fourth. Wonder who that is going to be. That's maybe two bullseyes from Philibaum. That might be. Six, six. There we have five, it. Five, four. So a nice edge for Philibon making the transition to the back line to have a six point cushion going to these difficult longer throws. You just need to find his center, I think. Because Philibon's picking up very quickly. And if Philibon takes this, he'll be the first multi discipline world champion. Throw seven. If he also takes hatchet. Throw eight. Ooh, pretty close. Six, four, drop. Five, four, four. So a commanding edge with the drop from Shepard going into the final two throws. Two shots left. 41 to 32, Philibaum leads. Only two more knives left each. And throw 10. Knives down. Shepard took a look at the scoreboard to see if it was worth it for him four, to try and make four, a run at the top, but four, five. really knew that he needed Philbaum to just miss. He needed a drop to get any help to get back into that Phil one. And so we are all tied two. up at a game apiece. We're going to game one three. For all one for all of the marbles throw. between Shepard and Philbaum in a World Knife Throwing Championship. You often see a lot of folks practicing from the second distance. Again, for those who are just tuning in, the second set of throws has to be done from ready, the second distance, which one, is a bit farther away, three. which means you get multiple rotations. It's a lot harder to hit. This is throw two. Throw three. Hold on, I'm going into the far right to see if he can get that grouping in there. They're almost, almost seems like they're afraid of the top and bottom bullseye. Five, four, four, six, five, four. A slight lead for Philibaum after those first three tosses. And look, don't want to get our head of ourselves. We're competing to 13. for a world championship Philibon here, but by two. it's a different discipline. Throw number four. Philibaum gets to get back out here before the hatchet final and just kind of work any energy out of the body too right now and he's he's found a nice rhythm with the knives throw five yeah, he's, he's doing really well clearly but uh i'm i'm hoping for his sake that it's not going to that it's not going to influence down. the hatchet throwing if because that's coming up next and switching disciplines is already hard enough five five six five so a three-point edge for mike Philibaum. Five throws to go as they go to the back line. Switch sides and step back. 26-23. Shane Shepard, who? Philbaum leads by three points. Got into the community just a few years ago. Must have been a successful beer pong competitor. Throw seven. He's gone to the World Series of beer pong out in Las Vegas. He's got the temperament and the skill. Oh, what a drop there. Throw eight. Matched by a bullseye from Philibon. Wow. At the very least, that might have been. Oh, well, actually, there we go. Knowing your opponent had a drop there, Philibon trying five, to wedge drop. it in there instead of just Six, taking points on the five, board somewhere is extremely suspect. 
honestly, I think in the next year or so, we're going to see a lot more people going for those top and bottom bullseyes because of Third, this exact situation right here. Leads by three. It makes sense in other throws, Evan, to mm -hmm. avoid the potential of a two mm -hmm. missing outside of the circle. But in that case, with the lead and with your opponent already with the drop, Throw 10. Shepard's got to go up here, doesn't he? Yeah. Shep's going to. They're both. And Philadon says, I'll go with you. There's some sportsmanship there. He doesn't have to. And it won't matter. Maybe not the championship he expected when he arrived in Texas, but he'll take it going into the biggest one of the afternoon. Mike Philibon will etch his name as the first ever World Knife Throwing League champion. He takes out Shane Shepard to take home the hardware. And you know what? Maybe the best, but you're definitely the first as he takes that knife out of the stone and he will send it and the sport has its first champion. They're not going to like that. He's got to focus on the next one coming up. But Mike Philibom's quest to be a world champion has at least one right now as he captures that one. $1,500 for the effort. And he's standing by now with Morgan Uber. Morgan? Mike, after losing the first game, you come back and win two straight. How did you find your rhythm? Um, just kind of took my time, uh, controlled my breathing. Um, just, again, respecting every shot. and. Uh, yeah. Earlier this morning, you wouldn't touch this trophy here behind us. You thought it would bring you some bad luck, but now it's yours. You're the first ever world knife throwing champion. When I hear when I say that, what goes through your mind? Um, <laughs> I still don't believe it. Um, honestly, I, I'm, I didn't really do knives too much. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm more than thrilled. I'm, I'm so excited. It's awesome. So. Mike, thank you so much. Thank Congratulations you. and thank good you. luck going forward. We'll be back with more action after this. The 2021 World Knife Throwing Championship is brought to you by the World Knife Throwing League. Pick up your own set of WKTL approved throwing knives at worldknifethrowingleague.com. The 2021 World Axe Throwing Championship is brought to you by AxeThrowingInsurance.com. Get your venue insured today. Back inside Billy Bob's as we're getting set to play for that trophy. That's the one everybody was after at the beginning of the week. The World Axe Throwing Championship, the hatchet division coming up in just a few seconds. Will Haskett back with Evan Walters. We welcome Rob Leverance back in as well as we've already crowned three world champions leading up to this final competition. And Rob, you got a front row seat for a lot of it as well. Man, how much fun were some of those? I mean, down to the absolute wire with some sportsmanship is too. Was, is always awesome to watch. Those, the axes that come in, two different styles from both teams too. We got the, the defending champions, back-to-back -back champions, who take that wide out stance and coming at an angle to allow them more area and that inch and a half bullseye, whereas Theodoro and Kobe Dean uh, kind of stand closer together and go straight at it. Gentlemen, let's get to the guaranteed rate replay of what we've had so far. Watch some of those championship performances. This back and forth, Evan, on Big Axe with Mark Marisol winning the title was absolutely electric. 100%. I mean, you could just feel the, the excitement in the air as people were going in, but as Rob mentioned earlier, the duels going in and the reigning champions came back and took their title back again. First time in any discipline we had a world champion defend their title. That was a key moment in the knife throwing championship. A drop on one side by Shane Shepard and then Mike Philibaum winning the first ever world knife throwing league championship. And now he gets to turn things right around really quickly, Rob, and get back out there, back to his favorite discipline with the hatchet. This is going to be a heck of a matchup between him and Garrett Knighting. Indeed. Uh Philibaum coming off those knives, uh, he, he's at a little bit of a disadvantage because his, his arm motion and muscle memory right now are with a significantly heavier projectile with the axe. So uh, his wind up 
brings it very close to his ear. If you're new to throwing, I advise you not to throw like he does. He touches his ear with his axe to make sure he's on that right path going to the board. Uh, it, it's his it's his uh, home base when he throws. So as long as he can get that, he's he's good at cold throwing because that's his source of, of where he's going to go with that throw. It's going to be a ton of fun to watch. A heavyweight battle for that trophy right there. Mike Philibaum, Garrett Knighting for a world title right after this. The 2021 World Axe Throwing Championship Finals is brought to you by the Ace of Spades Axe by WATL. Get yours today at WorldAxeThrowingLeague.com. Back inside Billy Bob's for the finale. The Hatchet Championship coming up right now to crown the 2021 World Axe Throwing League champion who will be the fifth player, first fifth person to call themselves a champ. We won't have any reigning champions. There'll be a new champion of the sport in this discipline. But the man who has really dominated the circuit in 2021, Mike Philibaum, just became the first world knife-throwing champion. But Garrett Knighting looked really, really good in his semifinal win over Jeff Cope earlier today. All right, we've swapped the boards out from the knife-throwing championship. We're back to that traditional-looking setup. So, Evan, Rob, a reminder of what we're going for here. Six points for the little red circle, eight points when you call kill shots at any point in time. These are two really good steady players. I'll throw you guys a curveball right now as we walk through these scoring. Does anybody go kill shot early to try and make things interesting? Garrett Netting has said earlier, and I, and I disagree with his strategy, but if he's ever up by three points, which might not happen against Philip Bond, but he would like to go kill shot and put the game out of reach and in his hands. Here, look at the birthday boy. What a birthday this would be if he were able to get it done for the championship and become the fifth to be crowned a champion in this discipline. And he's going up against the reigning U.S. Open champion from back in April, trying to win the two major titles available here in 2021 and really kind of assert himself as the top in the sport. There you see what they're playing for. They're guaranteed 4000 6000 to the winner, but... Like Mike Philibaum told me earlier today, it's like he doesn't care about the money. He wants to break records. He wants to Practice throw three. go after rings. He wants to go after trophies. And I think for both of these guys right now, uh, they they say, you know what? <laughs> we'll split it. I'll give you five. You give me five. All I want is the title, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the shows just about the passion of the sport. Most people, you know, the money is great, but really people just want to push the sport farther and push themselves farther in Practice it. Practice four. We see uh, Garrick Knighting using a flying fox over there. And Mike Philibaum using a customized ace of spades. Philibaum the bomb. Made sure to be put on his customized ace. These, these practice throws, uh, a lot of people put a little lax on these practice throws. But for these guys right now on this stage, it's important because they've been sitting for a little while. And like I mentioned earlier, Phil Obama is throwing something else, so it's, it's very important that they tighten it up, dial it in, and get these five practice throws to count that matters for this first throw coming up. Best two out of three, games of ten. Again, two kill shots available. You can call them at any point in time in the set. And a solid start for both. Six! Six. It's also good to mention that Garrett Knighting is the only person from the hatchet competition last year to get to the finals who's back in the Throw finals again. Two, tied at six. I always find it interesting how these throwers pick out how they aim. Philobalm, like I mentioned earlier, brings that accent very tight to his ear and even touches it. What he does to aim is he looks down the shaft of his handle and sights it like a gun. Mm. Make sure it's in line six. with what he's aiming at, right down his eye. He's only a few inches away from his ear, and that's how he throws now. Throw First three. miss of a bullseye 12, comes on the second throw of Philibaum. And then a miss to the right. Knighting, that one did it catch the lower part of the circle. 
to even it up. Six, five. It did. And we are tied at 17. Knighting, on the other hand, keeps that axe in his peripheral view at all times. Tied Helps at 17. Keep him focused on this the target, is throw keeping four. Him in front of him, whereas Mike brings it back behind his eye peripheral vision. Guys, sports is six, filled with cliches. Six. The one shot at a time, one pitch at a time, whatever it might sort of be. This sport has become so regimented in terms of routine that five. these guys physically Last know what it takes. Right now, it's just making sure that you can get yourself into that same process every throw. The muscle memory it takes to be as consistent as it is for these people to be in the finals is immense. And just the smallest thing. Six. Five. Can lead to five. Villabom edges ahead by one at the midway point of this first game in the Villabom championship match as they will switch sides. 29-28, throw six. Yesterday, Villabom had 130 throws. Garrett had 180. Work, uh, work around fatigue. Garrett removes his wrist from his action, removes his fingers. He feels like that's part of where a weakness comes and inaccuracy comes from. Well, we've heard that before from the previous world six, champion, uh, Ryan Smith. What he would do is he would say the less motion you can use, the better. Better accuracy. And you guys have seen this sport evolve so much over Throw the last seven. couple of years. First world championship here on ESPN 2018. There were all sorts of techniques and wild motions. and uh, Things have really tightened up in this sport to maximize that accuracy that's on display there for a couple of bullseyes. Six, six. I mean, this thing, I mean, some of these competitors have been competing since our inception. It's been five years of 40. techniques and developments. And Bill Vaughn leads by one throw it's eight. honed down on a fine edge. Again, they make it look six, easy. Six. But the, one of these two people will be the world champion this year. Well, it's sort of a double edge, pardon the pun, nine. to the axe as they're both going to go up for kill shots kill here shot. is that they make something physically look easy, but given this moment, they're making it look easy with a, a lot of noise. What a miss by Knighting. There and a massive throw there miss. by Philabon. Okay, so now, with that miss, you have a nine-point lead. Throw and he's ten. still Boy, gonna, he's going up because it doesn't matter. Again. Yep, it should be out of reach, but taking that final throw. A little bit of practice here. Also a little bit of mental game. You buried this kill shot right here. Send a little message letting him know he's in his zone. As Didn't. He misses. Hit, there you go. Miss. Didn't matter. We'll see. There you go. That just tells you. Knighting hit that kill shot. He's coming back from this next match. So Mike Philbaum takes the opening throw. game. They'll both take their practice throws here before game number two. But it will force Knighting to win back-to-back -back games to claim this world championship. And should note those back-to-back -back kill shot misses from Philabon on two swings that didn't matter necessarily the overall score, but just something to factor in as we get into th scoring throws here in game two. Center mass on both of those eyes. These guys are dialed in right now. Mm -hmm. And they start for both. Knighting, by the way, is a tax account out in Utah, in Pace on Utah. Philabom. Number two, tied at six. His story that we talked a lot about in April was just looking for a job a couple of years ago and responded to an ad on Indeed looking for an axe coach. Six, six. And said, okay, I'll try it, see what this is all about, and now has worked his way, fallen in love with the sport, the community, and, you know, his one game went away from being the face of the sport. That's the other thing that's great about this sport, too, is, I mean, with a bit of dedication, it's not hard to get on this level, and really, even at this level, it's almost anyone's match. Six, six. Throughout this weekend, we've seen some heavy hitters throughout the entire year. 
And honestly, anybody could have taken it. Ryan Smith, for Still example, tied. was here competing. This is but throw four. Philibaum just hit the bulls on that last throw, but it wasn't center mass. It was a little off to the side. You could see that was not the throw he wanted to complete. Even less wanted for uh, Garrett Knighting. I don't believe that's going to be a bullseye. No, I think there's pain in between it. Six, oh, oh. did Six. catch it. So a little reflection over there. I thought there may have been a little wood between. Throw five. He takes that blade five, off. You can see it did catch the red paint. Last throw before they switch sides. Oh, and a miss on the switch. Six, five. Doors open up a little bit here. So Knighting. Knighting can maybe breathe a little bit more. The, the perfect score is 64 the when the bullseye got smaller right for this championship a year ago just for the TV competition. We wondered what it would do to those chases for perfection, and we saw a couple on this show a year ago. Still not a commonplace six, occurrence, six. but at this level of competition, wouldn't be surprised to see someone dig down and find a way to a 64. Coming so into today, seven, yesterday, Philibon threw a 61.1 average over all of his matches. 57.1 by Garrett. Pretty solid scores being put up. Being reflected today in their throwing. But Knighting is pitching a perfect game right now with three six, throws to go. Philibon with that one game lead and just one slight miss on the fifth throw is 42, the difference. 41, throw eight. I see they have the chance to call kill shots. But I think they're going to keep playing it safe. Maybe another miss from Philibom. It is. Six. Philibom has to go for that kill shot if he's going to stick in, if he's going to stay in this match. Okay. That last throw would have been a good opportunity for Philibon to kill go up. Shot. Set the Nine mood kill, kill shot. shot. Two kill well. shots are going to have to be hit in this match anyways to win. That could have been his opportunity to set the mood for the next two throws. And honestly, I think kind of waiting may have done a little bit of damage for the mental game. Now he has to do it. But I mean, connects. This has to hit. It does. Keep him on his toes. Or did it. Hit! Hit! All right. Not out yet. Knighting with one throw for a perfect second game to force a decided third game. Oh, he missed. And Philibom connects, did he? He did, and with that miss, an incredible turn of events on the final throw of the day. And Mike Philibom accomplishes mission number one. He sweeps the majors this year and for the first time is a world champion. An absolutely stunning performance from both competitors. Philibom has been the favorite to win throughout the season. He's been sweeping so many tournaments so well. Easily top three in almost every tournament he's ever been in. It was, it was predicted, but man, Knighting gave him a fight. The shock on his face is incredible, Rob. He, he throws perfect through nine. Opens the door just a little bit with a miss on that kill shot. Philadelphia takes advantage and slams the door and finishes out the championship. Congratulations to Philadelphia. Congratulations to uh, Garrett Knighting as well. Happy birthday to him. And uh, <laughs> he, he said he wanted the records, but it was now more than just the idea of winning, that he wanted to do something special. And Knighting was perfect until the final throw of that second game. And with that connection, Mike Philibom is the champion. He has received that beautiful trophy axe <laughs> shaking from the moment. He's going to try and board it. And I'll tell you, too, that axe is heavy. He made it. The ace of spades is still wedged in the other board of where he connected on the kill shot that got it done. 
a U.S. Open champion, a world champion, and that right there, folks, is the man on top of the sport. Mike Philibaum, a world champion, and you can just see the relief and the release emotionally in our champion. What a run to another major trophy. We will hear from Mike Philibaum, still in disbelief about being a world champion. We'll talk to our champ when we return. Sinorama World Axe Throwing Champion is Mike Philibaum. $6,000, but more importantly, the title that goes along with it as being a world champion. Had a mission when he got here. He's a world champion in two disciplines this week, knives and now hatchet, and he's standing by with Morgan Uber. Mike, congratulations. In that second game, you played from behind the entire time yeah. as you stepped up to take that final kill shot. What was going through your mind? Uh, like I said before, uh, you know, it's just about controlling your breathing, um, you know, clearing your mind. You don't want to be thinking about other stuff. Um, it's happened to me once before, and you get that momentary thought of, well, if I hit this shot, there's the chance. Um, but you kind of got to just push that out and, uh, you know, concentrate on what you're doing. I did. Um, you know, obviously, if he would have hit, he would have won. Um, but I had luck on my side for this one, so. For the first time in the history of this sport, you're a two-time world champion. That has never happened before. How are you able to cement your legacy in the sport this weekend? Um, honestly, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, it is an absolute honor to be able to set records in this sport and you know make something for myself. Um, and I think it's been a really good year of accomplishing that. So. To fans watching at home that are interested in this sport, interested in getting into axe throwing, what's the number one biggest piece of advice that you would give them? Um, respect every single shot you take in this sport um, and make sure that you love it when you do it. Uh, if you don't, um, I mean, it's just you won't have as much fun with it, you know. So it, uh, it really just love it, control your shots, take your time with this sport. We talked earlier today, you have your axe, and it has the honeycomb pattern on there, similar to the tattoo that you have on your arm. And you said you were going to add some special things to that, depending on what happened. What do you plan to add there? Uh, I am definitely going to add the championships I've taken in there. Um, you know, I'm going to put 2021 Worlds, knife throwing Worlds, and uh, the U.S. Open, and I'm going to make myself a little waddle um, sleeve here. So. Well, Mike, congratulations. Thank you for joining us, and thank, thank you, you. very much. Thank you. Well, it's one thing to think that you're going to be the champion. It's another thing to actually go out and do it, not one, but in two disciplines. And what a year 2021 has been for Mike Philibaum. He wins two of the four here today, Evan Walters, as we reflect back on what has transpired, a phenomenal championship run here this year not just for Mike Philibon, but for the rest of it. And now starting to see some consistency in terms of our champions, a guy who came in with you know, lofty expectations in Philibon. We've got repeat champions on the dual side. And there's some star power at the top of the sport right now. There surely is. I mean, especially in the fact he is the first ever world knife throwing champion and the fifth ever world axe throwing champion this is star power right here but he has put the work in he has been fighting all year going to so many competitions and honestly if there's anybody who would have earned those titles it's that man right there all right let's relive all four championships as they went down here today it started with the big axe competition what an ending it was there as well we had a, what was supposed to be a measure off they decided let's not do it let's throw again the sportsmanship of that one, Mark Mirasol wins in big acts over Josh Russo. Then we went to the duels. Lucas Johnson and Hayden Brown lost their first match yesterday and then run the table to repeat as duels champions in 2020 and now in 2021. And then came Mike Philibaum in knives. Admittedly, just kind of got into it because he was here, found a way to get it done, and then thinking that he was going to go to a third decisive game, Garrett Knighting missing on the kill shot, and Philibaum, I think, Evan, still in disbelief about what just happened over the last 45 minutes of his life. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I think he's going to figure it out. An incredible run. You mentioned that the skills growing in this sport, the buzz that's growing in this sport. 
Now you guys go to the drawing board and get ready for 2022. What does this do as a launch pad to what could come coming up next year and beyond in the sport? Bigger and better competitions is what we're looking forward to. I mean, we are just scratching the surface with the potential that we have for axe throwing. It's still expanding, even despite the past year or so. We are still expanding at a rapid rate, and the World Knife Throwing League is right behind them as well. So I think next year is going to see some explosive growth for both. We're going to see more competitors coming in, and hopefully from a lot more countries represented around the world. A lot of connection through this community. You can see how much emotion there is and support that there is for this. A quick plug for those that they could be on this stage in a couple of years with the right practice. Where do they go? They go to worldaxthrowingleague.com or worldknifethrowingleague.com. You can go there, search for a local venue in your area, and get started throwing as soon as you as soon as you can find them. What a day. And what a bunch of drama when it was all said and done. But at the end of the day, in Texas, the lone star at the top of the sport, Mike Philibaum, who captures the World Axe Throwing Championship. For Rob Leverance, Morgan Uber, and Evan Walters, I'm Will Askett saying so long from Fort Worth. Mike Philibaum is your champion in the World Axe Throwing Championships.